I'm going to show you a massive victory by Fishy Anand playing with the white pieces against the French opening and he just crushes his opponent Wesley So in only 24 moves. So it's not only an exciting game you are going to see with a number of piece sacrifices but in fact you will learn how to build up the attack in a very efficient manner by the uh, former world champion. Let's have a look. The game was uh, played in uh, in Amsterdam today in the uh, Levitov uh, Chess Week. Very interesting tournament with um, 10 players, all play all, shorter time control, 10 minutes plus uh, 5 seconds uh, increment and uh, probably more games are covered from this uh, event on this channel. So make sure to subscribe and don't miss the, uh, the latest uh, excitement from the uh, world's top players. It's the French opening, as I said. Fishy starts with one e4, e6, d4, d5. Knight c3, knight f6, and we have the classical variation, the uh, Steinitz variation as white. Advances the pawn, kicks the knight, knight goes back to d7, and white strengthens its center with the move uh, f4. All very well-known theory. c5, knight f3, knight c6. Black is trying to bounce back to uh, challenge the center with both the pawn and the knight on c6, but white is ready for it and supports the pawn on d4 with bishop uh, e3, bishop e7, solid uh, developing move, and white goes queen d2, and black uh, plays a6. So here, first interesting uh, moment, and uh, of course, it's very likely that white is going to castle queen side and black is going to castle on the other side of the board with opposite castled kings, it's uh, going to be a very sharp game. But for those who are new to the French, make sure not to castle here immediately with, um, with uh, white because it runs into the move c4 when black can just close the center. And it seems to me that uh, black is really fast launching his b-pawn and these pawns, uh, first of all, the pawn on b4 will later kick the knight away. But black is really fast building up an attack against the uh, white king. So it's more precise to open the center. With the move D takes uh, C5, black is uh, gonna take it back with its knight. And here white played a very subtle move um, A3. Now you may think, was that really needed? Well, actually not, it's not needed, but uh, white has multiple uh, ideas. For instance, if uh, black would expand here with the move B5, one typical idea is to push the B pawn to B4 to, um, to hit a knight on c5. And now all these pawns are placed on light squares, which makes the bishop on c8 look, uh, look really bad. So that's one idea of the move a3. After castling kingside, which was played in the game, white doesn't really have to play b4. Now, I mean, uh, black hasn't committed its b-pawn to b5 yet. So it's, it's very, very subtle, but we will see uh, some differences uh, very soon. White instead played here the move queen f2. Very uh, nice and typical idea for these uh, structures. You're attacking the knight on c5 together with the bishop on uh, on e3. And uh, also the queen is looking for a way to come over to the king side. Not to h4 right now because the bishop on e7 covers that square. But who knows, maybe later on the queen is able to uh, come to uh, either g3 or, or h4. So black played here to move b6 to support the knight on, uh, on c5 and the knight is uh, quite well placed it, as i said it, it can count on the support of that uh, of that b pawn maybe later the knight can also come in to, uh, to e4 if if it wants but nothing has to be decided yet and um, i think after uh, castling queenside now black has uh, different uh, ideas of course you you gotta reckon with some potential uh, problems on the default so queen c7 was played that's a good move to place the, the queen there. And now white played a very logical move, bishop uh, d3, bringing the bishop into the game. So all the minor pieces are nicely placed next to each other. The, the rooks are connected as well. Um, should also be said that a move like king b1 is always uh, very useful. But bishop d3 was played and we have a very interesting game with um, chances for both sides. I mean, it's clear that black really wants to play on the queen side, but also a typical plan here for black was not played in the game. It's the move f6. And I think f6 is a move you definitely uh, have to take uh, seriously because you would like to get rid of that pawn on e5. And after taking on f6, bishop takes f6, 
we have this typical structure with hanging pawns in the center, but black's pieces are very active and white cannot win a pawn by taking twice on c5 because the pawn on f4 will be taken uh, as well. So very interesting uh, position, but it could be that um, black thought that there was no need to play f6 yet. And he instead, Wesley so played here the move bishop uh, b7, very logical move to, to get the bishop into the game as well. But now the queen comes to uh, to g3. And that's a nice move. I already said that the queen was looking for a path to, uh, to join the action on, uh, on this uh, side of the board. And if black is careless, let's say black brings the rook to the half open file, then white's idea is to play f5. Very typical. Now the queen supports the pawn on uh, e5 together with the knight, so the pawn cannot be taken. And there are multiple threats, including advancing the pawn to uh, f6, taking advantage of that uh, pawn on g7 being pinned. Also, the bishop can come to h6. And here we see that white's attack is much faster. So we take one move back and Wesley so understood that he needs to anticipate white's plan of uh, playing the move f5 and therefore played here f5 himself. Very radical move um, to close the diagonal for the bishop to the to the black king. f5 by white is no longer possible. Of course, it's possible to take on f6, but after rook takes f6, white's attack is no longer that threatening as, uh, as before because there are quite a number of pieces which are able to help out in defense, including the queen, which is on c7, guarding the seventh rank. So, well, that's, that's a sharp game, but Fishy had a totally different plan. He didn't want to take en passant. He played here to move king b1. So anyway, it's a useful move, making sure the king is uh, safe there. And the question is, how is black going to proceed? Now, with pawns on d5 and f5, something like knight e4 looks uh, a very logical move. So that uh, after knight takes e4, f takes e4, you are actually winning a piece as black. So white is not, uh, not recommended to, to take with a knight. You may take with a bishop. And after f takes e4, just go away with a knight. And uh, well, it's a sharp game. Black is not getting mated uh, anytime soon. Chances for, for both. But I think that Fishy was planning to go for the move queen h3 here, which is a remarkable move. The idea is very simple, that he wants to get in the move g4 to open up the files. After knight takes c3, b takes c3, these pawns are weak, but still there are quite a number of defenders. And white is fast opening up the g file and get rid of that pawn on f5. Anyway, this all didn't happen, but I want to give you an idea what is very typical for these lines. Now we are getting back to the game and we see that b5 was played. And that's actually also a very logical move uh, by, uh, by Black, as in a lot of lines, he wants to follow it up with, uh, with b4. The pawn on a3 is a hook, and that means that files can be opened very soon. But the main drawback now is that White can get rid of that knight on c5. That knight can no longer come into e4. After the exchange of uh, bishop for the knight, the queen comes to h3. And uh, here we see that Black's attack is, um, is much uh, slower. He went for the move g6 here, which is of course also a weakening move. But if we take it back, we also see that White's idea, one of the ideas is to play knight g5 with an attack against the pawn on e6, that backward pawn uh, is no longer protected by uh, any of uh, Black's pawns. And also there is this mating threat on, um, on h7. Therefore the move g6 is played so that the queen helps defending the pawn on h7. But now white comes with g4. This is the key move, white is faster. After f takes g4, queen takes g4, the attack plays itself. There are two basic ideas which can be merged into one idea. And the idea is very simple. Just launch the h pawn and uh, try to open the files for your pieces so that your queen and rooks, they are able to hit the black king, certain cases also bishop takes g6 is an option or well, the pawn on e6 is hanging as well. Very nice attacking play by, um, by, uh, by white. But instead of taking the pawn on g4, black of course wants to keep the files closed as long as possible. Therefore b4 was played and now g takes f5. White just ignores that the pawn on b4 is able to, to capture the knight on, uh, on c3. 
um, which is of course the, the critical move. But let's say if, if you take back with, with the G-pawn, then a move like knight a4 can be played. You're securing the knight, um, hits the bishop on c5, and later on we will get to see similar attacking uh, motives as, uh, as in the game, as very soon uh, rooks will come to the, to the g-file. Now, let's have a look at what happened in the game. Because Wesley so played here the move b takes c3, and white continues with f takes g6. It's a peace sacrifice. Peace sacrifice number one, guys. And this is not the end. We will get to see much more. Um, there are similar um, ideas uh, here. Again, you can take on e6. If you take on g6 here as black, you may take the pawn on g6. And now all these three pawns are no longer there. The next step is just to get a rook to the g-file and that's gonna be checkmate very soon. So this is very dangerous. Instead, uh, the move rook a to e8 was played to protect the pawn on, uh, on e6. And now, very important uh, is that after g takes h7, the king is able to hide in the corner. That's something you should rather avoid. Now the white pieces are no longer able to give a check and black is able to consolidate its position uh, somehow. But much better, rather than taking the pawn, is to put a rook on g1 first. And that's a, another sacrifice, because look at this bishop. It can just take the rook, which happened in the game. Bishop takes g1, rook takes g1, and black is a full rook up. But the files are going to be opened very soon. Uh, g takes h7 is, uh, is an idea, obviously. Uh, I should cover a couple of options. First of all, a typical idea here is to play h6 with the idea that the g file remains closed. If you take on h6, there's queen g7 and black holds on. So don't do that, but much better instead, and this all didn't happen in the game, black didn't play h6, there is this move g7. You're hitting the rook on f8. After rook f7, you take on h6, threatening checkmate on h8. Black has to whip off that pawn on g7, but now check on h7 because the rook cannot take the queen because of the pin, king gotta go to f8, and now it's queen h8 with check, the king got to give up the protection of the rook, rook takes g7, and this is just a crushing attack after king d8, beautiful move here, is to sacrifice your queen, and after king takes, you take the queen yourself, white is a rook up. So this is the effect of getting open files for your strongest pieces, you don't need them all, but you need to get your strongest pieces closer to the uh, black king. So instead of playing h6, black decided here to play the move rook takes f4. Basically, he's counting on the fact that after g takes h7, there is once again king h8 and black survives. But this is the moment where peace sacrifice number three was executed. After sacrificing first a piece and then the exchange, the rook on g1, now it's time for white to come up with sacrifice number three, queen takes e6. A fantastic idea to uh, sacrifice the queen with the point that you are giving a check. Of course, the queen can be taken, was not played in the game. But then there is g takes h7 with double check. And uh, the main point is that now, after the king goes into the corner, there is no black piece, uh, major piece of black guarding the back rank. And that means there's rook g8 with uh, checkmate, beautiful cooperation between bishop protecting the pawn, pawn protecting the rook, and that's uh, that's just checkmate. Also, instead of going to h8, if you go to f7, for instance, I just get a new queen, I'm a rook down, but on the next move, something like rook g7 will come. It's a totally crushing attack. There's no convenient way for black to, uh, to escape. So that's game over. After queen takes e6, the queen cannot be taken. King f8 was played. But then anyway, you don't have to move your queen. You just take the pawn on uh, on h7. And that is, uh, that's just crushing. Uh, you're threatening to promote the uh, the h pawn. And that's, uh, that's basically it. There's not much um, black can do here. So here, Wesley so resigned. And that's, that's fascinating, right? It's uh, not every day you see a top grandmaster with rating 27, 69 getting crushed in a popular opening like uh, like the French. But Fishy Anand is the, the master of the initiative. He used to crush all these opponents with the white pieces against Sicilians or against the French openings um, in, a, in a very nice aggress aggressive uh, style. So I think this is an absolute model game. Let me know in the comments what you think of this game. 
if, um, if you uh, would like to see more of these games. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel too. Let the channel uh, grow. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon again.